Maybe I was just being a coward, but it was hopeless. She was gone. I waited every morning for an update. I would always call the police station to get an update. It was tor- Have you ever been in a position where you found yourself questioning everything you believe to be true? Perhaps it was something religious or political. Maybe someone you trusted did something to undermine your trust in them. Maybe someone close to you turned out to be a monster. When I was a sophomore in high school, my father began what we referred to as a project in our basement. He never specified what the project entailed, only that it was his business and whatever went on down there was to be kept strictly confidential. He even soundproofed the basement walls, although I found it strange his business will require that level of privacy. I didn't push the issue. As for my social life, I had a small group of friends at school, some of whom were into all kinds of kinky, bizarre, and sometimes I'll write disgusting stuff. Typically, I tuned out whenever the subject of weird stuff came up, as I didn't spend much time on the internet. Typically, I would just look up NFL or NBA highlights, and social media sites like Twitter and Facebook never really appealed to me. One day, my friend Kevin brought up a subject that I had never considered before and has come to haunt me ever since, something he referred to as the dark web. What he described it was horrific, hitmen advertisements and other crazy things. I'm not sure why, but his descriptions of the dark web piqued my curiosity. Could such a messed up place truly exist on the internet? Kevin invited us over for the weekend so he could show us what he was talking about. We agreed to go over. Saturday came and Kevin had managed to hack into the dark web. It didn't take very long for the rest of us to see he was telling the truth. All the awful things he had described were on full display right now. It was nauseating to see. After about 20 minutes of scrolling down, Kevin came across a link to an untitled live stream. Out of curiosity, he clicked on the link. The screen changed to a pitch black of screen. After a short time, we were greeted by a digital clock gradually counting down. When it reached zero, the numbers disappeared and the black screen remained. For the next 30 seconds or so, we heard a deep and raspy breathing sound. Eventually, a beam of light appeared, presumably from a flashlight, and it illuminated some strange man wearing a hideous mask, a top hat, a suit, and a cape. I get it, it sounds fake, but this really happened. When he spoke, his voice was distorted. I'm guessing to help keep his identity hidden. He said, good evening, and thank you all for joining us. You all may call me Hawkins, and boy do we have a show for you tonight, a pair of helpless victims. With that, the rest of the screen became illuminated. We saw a small room and the walls painted red. On the back wall were two women. One very obese and the other one was in good shape, both of whom were trapped on a wall. Hawkins approached the obese woman and stroked her face very creepily. Are you an ugly one, aren't you? Ugly creatures like you don't deserve to be here. The pretty ones do. He then glanced at the second one, the more attractive woman, and he said, am I right? She didn't respond. I have something special planned for you, sweetheart, but first... Let us deal with the little ugly one. I began feeling nervous. I was hoping this was all just a strange act, but with everything we had been shown on the dark web so far, I wasn't too sure of that. Hawkins shouted for garden cheers. A pair of hands appeared from off the camera to give the masked man some garden cheers. He then approached the woman and pried the shears open. He said, what a pity if only you were better looking. I might not have to do this. With that, he began to do the unthinkable thing and then all we heard were deafening screams. My friends and I all gasped in shock and one of whom began to vomit. Then out of nowhere, this guy grabbed his chainsaw. I get it, this sounds over the top, but this is really what happened. I felt queasy at the moment of the chainsaw. After receiving the item, he used it. The obese woman passed out from shock while the second woman was also beginning to sob in terror. 
Eventually, Hawkins shut off the chainsaw. He looked at the other woman and he yelled for a whip. The unseen assistant handed him a whip. He used it and when he was done, the girl dropped to the floor very suddenly. It was at this point when Kevin noticed a chat box on the side. Most of the messages from viewers were expressing utter glee and satisfaction at the horrific sight. Outrage. Kevin typed into the chat box. What the hell is wrong with you people? I warn you, the police will hear of this. Hawkins walked behind the woman, and suddenly, the anonymous assistant spoke up. He said, hey boss, check this message out. Hawkins pushed the woman over and walked to the webcam. Oh, a tough guy, huh? Gonna call the cops on me, huh, Kevin? It was like a ton of bricks were dropped on all of us. Did that man really just mention my friend's name? Suddenly, a box appeared containing his full name and address. Kevin was frozen in terror. Whatever. I have all the information I need on you. It looks like I'll be seeing you soon. That's what Hawkins said. Hawkins walked away, back toward the woman. Kevin finally shut the computer off and curled up into a ball, shaking uncontrollably. The rest of our friends bailed, but I chose to stay behind, even though I was also frightened out of my wits. Fortunately, nothing happened that night, but Kevin didn't get any sleep at all. He was a nervous wreck for the next few days. Unable to concentrate in class and staying quiet at the lunch table when he was normally a very talkative kid. Several weeks passed and he began to mellow out and return to his old self. The situation on Dark Web appeared to be over. Until one Friday night, that is. I was watching the 10 o'clock news when a report broke out about a mass homicide that occurred a few miles away. I was shocked and horrified when I saw a reporter standing outside when I recognized Kevin's house. His mother, father, and both his siblings were found, and Kevin himself was reported missing. I woke up in the middle of the night to use the restroom when I saw my father reach the top of the staircase. His clothing was covered in dirt, which I found very odd. I asked him why he was up, and he told me that he was fixing a busted sprinkler with an attitude. I sighed, whatever, Dad. I did my business, and I went back to sleep. The next afternoon, my dad went out on a run. He went to go run some errands. While he was gone, I suddenly decided out of the blue to check out the basement. Looking back, I'm not sure why I picked this particular moment to check it out, but what the hell. I wanted to see what the secrecy was all about. I reached the bottom of the stairs and began checking out the basement. Nothing looked out of the ordinary from the last time I had set foot down here, aside from a few items being in a different place. And then I looked underneath the staircase and noticed something that definitely was not there before. It was a door. I walked to the door and I opened it. A light turned on automatically and what I saw shook me to my very core. It was a small room with red walls and mounted cufflinks. In the corner, I saw a blood-stained garden shears and a chainsaw. On the wall next to the door was a desk with a computer and webcam. I also saw the mask. The same mask worn by the man I only knew as Hawkins. I was standing in the same room where the awful live stream took place weeks earlier. I heard my father's voice shouting upstairs when he noticed the basement door was open. He came down cursing at me, but he stopped dead in his tracks when he saw me standing in the entry of his secret room and holding a mask. We stared at each other in awkward silence for a long time. My father was arrested shortly after. He had soundproofed the walls to prevent the possibility of anyone's scream from being heard around the house. My friend Kevin and those two women from the live stream were buried in our backyard. Their bodies, or what was left of them, were laid on top of one another. I guess that explained my father's late night yard work. As to why he took the name Hawkins as his dark web identity, he confessed to murdering another man back in 1995. The man's name was Carl Hawkins. Five years have passed since I discovered the truth about my father. I haven't paid him one visit in prison. Eventually, he will be executed by means of lethal injection. I wish I could say I'm saddened by this, but I'm not. He's still my father after all, but it is what it is. Now I'm left to wonder whether he passed on some kind of bad seed to me. I fear that one day I will snap and become the same kind of monster that he had become. But I always wonder, who was the person holding the camera? There's no more dark web searching for me.
A few years ago, I did something terrible. Sometimes I really wish I didn't. Something I can never take back, honestly. It all started when my girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, broke up with me. I know this might seem trivial and just a part of life is growing up as a person. However, unfortunately for me, it had a complete reverse effect. I know all you think I'm childish and I just needed to take it on the chin and deal with it. You might be right, but I didn't. I helped her with everything within her life. I wasn't going to allow that to happen unpunished. I know it was petty and it was wrong, but you have to understand I was desperate. I was hurting. It honestly felt as though my heart was aching. It was throbbing so hard I honestly thought at any point I would explode. I know that sounds dramatic and I'm honestly not looking for sympathy. I'm not the victim here. Well, not anymore. I made sure of that. I honestly could feel my body shaking with rage, so I got up with hatred and darkness in my heart and I booted up my laptop. I wasn't a stranger to the dark web. I've spent countless hours trying and failing to navigate it to help with my boredom. I only ever found the usual rabbit holes falling into the typical drug and honey trap sites and forums. I just wanted for her to hurt. I wanted her to feel the embarrassment I had felt and suffered at her hands. My original plan, although very distasteful and wrong, wasn't malicious. It wasn't violent in any way. I just wanted to humiliate her. I still had photos and videos from our time together. You know, personal videos and photos of her. And in my pent up anger and depressed state, I thought it was a good idea to use these against her. I see now I was wrong from the start, but I wish I had only done that. As awful as it seems, that was nothing to what I actually did. I kept digging and digging, clicking link after link until eventually I clicked on the link and I found something that caught my attention. It was a form, a form called the naughty list. On the site was a question. Do you know someone who has been bad? If so, maybe you should put them on the naughty list. Perfect, I thought. This has got to be it. I upload all my personal photos and videos on there and maybe link her social media and we'll see who's laughing then. I thought about adding her address, but she was back living with her family and even I drew the line there. The form wasn't what I expected though. You couldn't just upload to their homepage. There were different sections on it or punishments as they called it. I remember thinking how dramatic it was, how dumb and naive I was. There were several different sections, Elf on the Shelf, Krumpus Cramps, and Frozen Fields, among others. It kind of made me chuckle, I guess. That's why I just didn't think it was anything serious. Anyway, with the sections, Elf on the Shelf kind of made me crack a smile. But that's not what I went with. I chose something called Slay Snatcher. I don't know why I just did. It was kind of funny to me. After clicking on it, I had to wait a good minute and a half before this bright white page loads up, filled with a few black text boxes and a text that read, Santa is waiting for this write-up. Write up his naughty list. Please fill in the details and he'll do the rest. I thought to myself, that's cute. I just thought it was kind of stupid, but I filled it in regardless. It was name, age, and birthday and links to the person's social media. It was all there. Everything I was so desperately looking for, and of course, photo uploads. Jackpot, I remember smiling to myself, halfway cackling in the process. It wouldn't allow me to upload any videos, but the photos were more than enough for me. It was hot girl summer type pictures, if you know what I mean. It also asked for the person's address, but as I previously said, I wasn't really about to go that far, but I did write in her hometown our hometown, something I really wish I didn't do. After I had finished putting in her information without even a moment's hesitation, I clicked submit. After a few seconds, a little text box appeared asking, are you sure? Santa won't forget. He checks that list twice, all names are final. I smugly pressed yes, and that was that. Perfect, I thought, until I was redirected to another page. It took a few minutes to upload, but when it did, it caught me off guard. It simply said, thank you for submitting the naughty list. We really appreciate it. I had achieved my goal. I thought job done. It's all uploaded. People will see them and message her on social media. Then she'll be humiliated, feeling better about myself. I calmly and confidently shut down and wiped everything correctly, making sure I couldn't be traced or implicated in any way. 
The next morning, I woke with the biggest and most disturbing smile I've ever produced. I was so pleased with myself, looking back on it now. It honestly makes me feel sick. I couldn't wait to see the fruits of my labor. I was so excited to see her suffer. I wanted to break her and for her to feel as worthless as she had made me feel. To my absolute dismay and disappointment, nothing happened. I waited and I waited, but nothing. No angry phone calls or texts. No outraged social media posts. Nothing at all. I thought maybe at first she could have been trying to ignore it. Or maybe she reported the abuse and had been told not to engage any potential troll or creeper. I mean, surely it worked, right? I mean, there's no way I could check. I couldn't find that link again, even if I tried. Anyone who surfed the deep web or dark web would know this is true. It's just not cataloged, it's a mess. And I only stumbled across it by chance in the first place. I wish I hadn't. So a few more days go by, and by now my excitement was faded. And I feel dejected and genuinely upset that it clearly hadn't worked. No one could be so calm if it had worked. And I couldn't exactly ask her to go check. That would just point the finger straight at me. So after a while, I just gave up. In truth, the whole ordeal was now tiresome to me. And as sad as it sounds, it has strangely made me feel better. Like I hadn't gotten it all out of my system somehow. A few more days later, I was awoken to a loud knock on my door. Previous drama of my former relationship had completely escaped my mind at this point. And just for some context, I live alone and don't get many visitors at all. So I was more annoyed than curious to see who was at my door. So you can imagine my shock when I flung open my door to be greeted by the stern faces of two police officers. Shit, I thought to myself, this is it, I'm going to prison. Everyone is going to think I'm some kind of freak, which I guess in all fairness, I was at the time. They asked to come in and I of course obliged. I said, come on. I remember thinking at the time, they've only asked me to come in. As of right now, I'm not under arrest or anything, so I better see what they want. But what they asked me completely and utterly knocked the wind out of me. When was the last time you saw Katie? I was speechless and for a second, I must have looked like the most guilty and suspicious person in the world. Realizing this, I quickly shook the look of surprise and dread off my face and answered as calmly as I could muster. Not since we broke up, around two weeks ago. This was true, but it didn't save me from the barrage of intense scrutiny and questioning. Where were you on the night of? I told them the truth at home. Can anyone verify this? I said, uh, no. I live alone, but I get dropped off at home after work by one of my colleagues, which is routine after every shift, so I can, I guess. And what time was this? I told him the truth around 10.30, and the cameras at work would show me leaving at around 10.20, and it's only about a 10 minute drive here. Did you leave your property at any other point after you returned? No. I told the cops that there's a camera by the apartment's entrance that will show I'm telling the truth. His face, intense stare, and concentration into my eyes seemed to waver and loosen slightly, so I thought I'd push my luck and ask what this was all about. He stated that although he can't give me details on an ongoing investigation, Katie had been reported missing. She was last seen by her mother leaving their home to shop and browse the stores but never returned. The police officers left soon after that and actually thanked me for my time. They did check the CCTV and with my boss and colleague who confirmed my story and that I was telling the truth. Days turned into weeks and still nothing. It seemed as though she just had vanished into thin air. I couldn't believe it. It couldn't have been because of me. I thought maybe it's possibly some creep stalked her socials and found her address after I posted them along with the images, but surely it had to be a coincidence. That stupid form couldn't be real. It said Santa's naughty list. That definitely couldn't be real. The longer it went on, the more horrible I felt. I know I wasn't physically responsible, but in one way or another, I had caused this, or at least put the wheels in motion. I felt just as guilty as if I had done something to her. I mean, this is the girl I once loved, the girl I still love, and I had done this. I had caused this and her poor mother, they had been estranged for years. I tried to get on normally with my life, but it was hard. I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, and you know something, I knew I deserved it. I would cringe every time I caught myself feeling sorry for myself. I took the drinking to make myself sleep. 
anything to numb the pain, anything to get the image of her face and the sounds of her screams out of my head. I couldn't go to the police, but how could I? If I confessed, my life was as good as over, as selfish as it was. I just didn't believe it would even help to find her if I did. Maybe I was just being a coward, but it was hopeless. She was gone. I waited every morning for an update. I would always call the police station to get an update. It was torture until one day. They did find her. But as I'm sure you all can already tell, this story doesn't have a happy ending. But she was eventually found in an old abandoned factory in the outskirts of the next town over. I just couldn't believe it. I could feel my throat tighten to the point I was struggling to breathe when I heard the news. In my head, I was begging and pleading with whoever or whatever. It must be some kind of mistake, a mix-up. It couldn't be because of me. But unfortunately, it was no mix-up. She was found stuffed in a chimney. Her body was inside a sack, a toy sack. I couldn't believe it. I felt sick. This must be some kind of sick joke. I kept trying and failing to convince myself. I felt my body tremble. She had been there for a while, and you could tell by looking at her. They knew it was her because stuffed into her eye socket was a small piece of paper, a small piece of paper that read, Naughty List, Katie, you should have been good. I blacked out, and I collapsed where I was standing, and I hit my head pretty hard. When I regained consciousness, I hoped, I prayed, it was just a bad dream. But of course it wasn't. It was real. It was all real. I'm a simp. Nothing will ever make up for the torture I subjected a girl I once loved and cherished. All because of my own ego and misguided sense of pride and self-worth. I wish I could take it all back. You deserve justice, Katie. You deserve to be able to rest in peace at the very least. Maybe confessing will bring you and your family closure. Maybe ending my own life will make us even. But regardless of the answer, I'm far too much of a coward for either. I won't go on the dark web again, just because of this situation.